Coming up on The Breakfast, house officers in government hospitals complain about old salary arrears over three months. A cry for help. Parents of the 39 students abducted from a federal college of forestry mechanization. Mando Igabi asked Governor Nasil El Rufai to negotiate with the kidnappers. One of the parents will be speaking to us this morning. And uh, also this morning, Transparency International says $5 billion stolen from Nigeria is now frozen in foreign banks. That's about 2 trillion naira. Where are these funds and how can we get them back? Are some of the questions that we'll be asking a representative of Transparency International this morning. And the National Youth Council of Nigeria, NYCN, calls on President Muhammadu Buhari to convene a national dialogue. The reason, they say, is to avoid a breakup of the country. The NYCN president will be here later on the show. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. I am Annetta Felix. And I am Osaogi Obon, and I am extremely excited to be here again on a Friday morning. I particularly like the Friday morning editions, mostly mm -hmm. because it's the last one for the week, <laughs> even if I'm going to be here on Saturday. But, you know, still excited to be here. How are you? I am um, not so great. You know, I told you about the exercise routine I, I just started last night. Let's see. Hopefully, I can keep this up. Or like routine are you? Are you? Are you, are you uh, jumping jacks. All oh, thanks to and shout outs to Lamy Day in our social media department. She hooked me up on that one. So I'm trying to, you know. What are you trying to um, achieve? Is it fitness or? I used to be a lot more slimmer. Would you believe that? Well, you know, trying to you know, get back in shape and you know just maintain a healthy lifestyle generally. I actually did start, you know, um, on Monday. You know, mm -hmm. and I've I've kept it going um, all through the week. So mm. uh, let's see how next week also goes. If I can add more routines to my mornings, just that you know it starts at five twenty in the morning. So wow, uh, you're you know in between sleep and wanting to work Aww. out at the same time. But, For me, know. I feel that the night routine is the perfect because I mean, just imagine doing all the workout. I would be so exhausted sitting here. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So there's a lot that we are talking about this morning. First of all, someone got himself in trouble. Uh, there's a, we're going to talk about a guy who stole a motorcycle. Mm. But before that, uh, we begin with the fate of doctors in Nigeria. They, they have always complained about being treated wrongly by the Nigerian government. There's hardly a year. We could even say a couple of months when doctors don't go either on strike or threaten to do so. The reason is always poor welfare packages. Now, house officers say they are owed up to three months salary arrears, and even when they, of course, still go to the hospital to treat patients. Uh, I've seen a couple of those videos on uh, social media where they, you know, got on the streets to um, protest. You know, they are, they are being owed, um, you know, their salary arrears for, for months and months and months. And, you know, a lot of people would argue that it's very, very unfair um, to keep doctors that way. And, um... I'm not even sure where to start from, you know, or where to, you know, begin this conversation from. Um, so I'll probably start with the fact that, you know, Nigeria continues to, you know, almost be that place where uh, there's, you know, people who are not appreciated for the work that they do. Um, and you cannot, you know, really, really ignore the fact that, you know, some of these, you know, issues start from the top all the way to the bottom, you know, starts all the way from the federal government to the state mm -hmm. to the uh, uh, ch um, chief medical directors of these hospitals because it makes absolutely no sense why house um, officers will be owed salaries um, at a time like this during a pandemic when they should be given, um, you know, the best, you know, welfare packages to ensure that we are able to get the best out of our health care system. Um, and so for people who, you know, have been seeing those protests, you know, I, I feel like everyone should be somehow somewhere on their side and demand that the Nigerian gov government, you know, ensures that they are paid their salaries. Um, some time ago, uh, we spoke about um, even lack of, of a hazard allowance, you know, which is just about 5,000 naira. Um, if, you're, if you're, you know, dedicating your life every day to ensure that Nigerians are healthy and ensure that Nigerians uh, um, um, who come to the hospital to seek help get the best health uh, care services, then you should be paid your salary arrears at the end of the month. It makes absolutely no sense. And this is another opportunity to point out that 
when things like this happen, there should be questions as to why these you know, salaries are not paid. Mm -hmm. Whose fault is it? You know, is it coming from the federal government? Uh, is it from the state government or is it from the hospital you know, itself? Where do these funds go to? Who has received these funds and refused to pay them? Or who has stopped these funds from coming in uh, to the house officers? Okay, so when it comes to this issue about you know, medical staff, strikes and salaries, we need to understand one thing, and this is no justification for the failure of the government, as it's not just a Nigerian problem. All around the world, even in the best of the countries, as we would like to call them, even in the US, we see, you see, medical doctors, frontline workers, they are frontline heroes. They are essential, but the fact is that they are undervalued. So they, they do not get the pay they deserve, because first of all, you see that this COVID-19 pandemic has brought upon us like an unprecedented challenge where more doctors are needed you know, in the hospital, in the wards, more than ever before. And we're having less and less of them. And when you bring it home to Nigeria, you find that we've talked about this on The Breakfast before. I spoke to a friend of mine who's a doctor and he says, I can't remember the exact statistic, but it went something like this. To every 4,000 patients, there's just one doctor meaning we need more people. But when you have an educational system that doesn't even churn enough doctors as much as you need them, because you know strikes here and there in the educational system keep those people in the four walls of the school when they should be you know, in the wards treating, treating uh, patients and attending to them. So you have a backlog, backlog of people who should be out in the labor market, so to speak, but are trapped in the educational system. That issue is there. You have you know, cases where doctors or the medical body in Nigeria and the federal government are still having that back and forth dance where people are not getting the pay they deserve. And you keep hearing cases here and here out about doctors who die on the front lines and their families get no compensation. So we do need a total overhaul. I completely agree with the fact that they are, you know, underappreciated. Um, I wouldn't necessarily agree that it's the same thing, you know, um, across the world. Trust me. Um, maybe, yes. maybe maybe it's better than it is here. Absolutely. Yes. Definitely. You know, we, but the we, fact is that they're not getting paid as they should. In Nigeria, yes. Factually. Um, in, other, in other countries, you know, that they, most of these Nigerian doctors run to, and we talk about this brain drain. Um, I remember in the start of the pandemic in the UK, even they were talking about more pay for health workers and mm -hmm. frontline workers, and those things exist. But you wouldn't hear that they've not been paid for three months or for six months. Mm -hmm. um, what you would instead hear is that they need more pay, they need more allowances, you, you know, to, to keep them running. Um, but here in Nigeria, I don't think it's the same thing. It's a totally different picture here. Um, They're on different the scales, that, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, completely different mm -hmm. scales, you know. And I've never heard that. Um, House of, um, um, State House of Assembly or you know, uh, National Assembly members are owed salaries. I've never heard that the allowances weren't paid at the end of the month. You know, but we hear yeah. these things for doctors, we hear it for teachers, and there's a lot of um, occupations in Nigeria that are very, very undervalued and unappreciated. Um, mm -hmm. Professors, um, um, school teachers, primary school teachers, secondary school teachers, university lecturers, a lot of them are um, underappreciated and under, undervalued. Um, not just the doctors, but it's really, you know, the level of interest that we put into these fields as a country, the value that we place into our health care and our educational system as a country, that's what shows uh, when these things happen. So um, I hope that they resolve some of these things. I hope that the NMA can step in here and other bodies that represent doctors and healthcare care um, workers um, can step in here and ensure that some of these things are resolved. If you talk about the amount of money that we're talking, it's not even so much money. Uh, how much a house officer has paid? You know, maybe 150, 170,000, maybe even less. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not even so much money that we're talking about here. So they should be paid. Um, and it's, a, it's, a, it's embarrassing, you know, that you have doctors get, going out on the streets to complain. Police officers are also underpaid. Um, um, and so Nigerian government needs to do better, generally. Indeed. Um, another issue, another this, issue morning. this morning really is the story of a 32 year old man who was arrested five months after he allegedly stole a motorcycle belonging to the police. You heard that right. He was arrested by the police for allegedly stealing a motorcycle belonging to the police. How, how funny is this really? The police say Yusuf Saliu stole the motorcycle when the police station was invaded during the chaos that followed the NSAS protest in October. The spokesman of the Lagos State Police Command uh, says intelligence reports led to the arrest. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, but what? some of the things that don't add up to me, you know, do, do Nigerian police have motorcycles? Uh, do they have officially registered Nigerian police motorcycles or this where or this is just one of the bikes that was in the uh, police station that was impounded Good. from, you know, another see, Nigerian? I love your question, Selgi. See, I was going to ask, I, maybe I need someone in the police force to help us explain this, but remember when motorcycles were banned in Lagos? Mm -hmm. We continue to say policemen carry passengers. Policemen have carried me on bikes and they collected money from me. So they were basically, they're policemen, but they were basically collecting money from, like, they became motorcycle riders, motorcycle operators. So they will carry passengers on their bikes and they will wear police shirts, you know, police t-shirts. Because you can't stop them. Because you can't, no, will your colleagues stop you? And they will collect money from people. So really, it's... All goes back to this systemic problem we've been talking about, really. Well, you know, there is that part where, um, you know, the police and the army are one of the people who break the laws themselves. You, know, you, see, you see, you know, uh, people going against traffic and their police vehicles. You see uh, bullion vans going, away, you know, against traffic and, and you know, nobody stops them. I have them. seen police there officers, is... I have seen law enforcement officers pack indiscriminately on the road. Yeah, there is... And you try and do exactly what they did and they would arrest you, impound your vehicle and you know, collect so much money from you there, before there is, they let you go. There's those parts, you know, but I, I want us to focus on Yusuf Saliu um, and, um, you know, the, 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 the other angle that I want to also point, mm -hmm. you know, look at this from. Um, as much as, you know, there's questions that need to be asked about how the police has, you know, motorcycles, um, whose motorcycle it really is, if mm. it is his own, that he went to get back, if it is one of those you know, motorcycles <laughs> that was a good question. Um, impounded, you know, and uh, locked in the police station because they, you know, were, were running on a route that the government had banned motorcycles on. Mm -hmm. There's those questions. And, and then also, I, would, I, I must point out that these are some of the people that made the NSAS protest look like it was filled with hoodlums and miscreants um, because the protesters who were online and who, you know, gathered themselves from, from Twitter weren't violent, didn't steal anything, didn't vandalize anything, didn't go out there to cause any chaos. So these are some of the people who went around looting uh, stores and looting shops mm -hmm. and, and even bold enough to go into a police station to steal a motorcycle. So um, I don't feel sorry for him. If he is, you know, actually guilty of stealing a motorcycle, then yeah, he should face, the, you know, the law and what the law says. But Another um, issue we need to also consider is how people sell fake things. I mean stolen things and then it gets straight back to you. I've heard of people who you legitimately want to purchase a vehicle, a motorcycle, a car, and you use your hard end money, your savings to buy that, only for the police to locate you months later to say you bought a stolen vehicle and they arrest you for nothing, like you had no idea. They gave you genuine papers, but you bought a stolen vehicle without, without knowing. So th that's also a possibility. The fact is the police needs to do their investigation. Another thing is, I'm really not a fan of these media trials, like, you know, lawyers will call them. Let the police, in other clients, police will do their investigation. They have everything down to the T. There is no locking you up and going to do investigation. Everything is done. So they're coming to you with evidence. They have all the evidence to charge you. Look at what happened with uh, a hush puppy. They have all the evidence. To pay. They track you for months and months. Every evidence is there. Yeah, you know so what? when they're arresting you, they're doing it with facts, not they're arresting you on suspicion. Yeah, but, you know, this, it says that, you know, he was arrested after intelligence reports. Um, hmm. you know, what else do they have said? Um, so, you know, I want to assume, um, there's, of course, you know, the things that you mentioned, but I want to assume that they, they know what they're saying and he actually did steal a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, my question really is, how, is this a police registered motorcycle? Does Nigerian police have motorcycles? Um, is this a motorcycle belonging to a police officer? Is this a motorcycle belonging to a Nigerian citizen that was impounded, impounded in yes. a police station? Mm -hmm. If you go to most police stations across Lagos, you would see a lot of these Lots. motorcycles oh that were uh, seized. Well, I'm not sure what happens to them after, if they're auctioned off or not. Um, but now these that are you, questions that need to be Now that you asked. mentioned this, I need to chip this in. You know, you know this issue about the, um, motorcycles or, yeah, motorcycles being impounded because, you know, there's a law against them. I see lots of cases when I drive through Lagos about how, I can't remember the name of the government agency, is it LOMA or LASMA or, but that government agency, that basically impounds vehicles. You see them chasing motorcycles. The motorcycle gets or has an accident. The person is there lying on the floor and they move away. They just drive off. And you can see somebody who is bleeding, somebody who needs medical attention. 
Oh yeah. my. Welcome to Nigeria. Anyway, um, good luck to Yusuf Sali and um, medical doctors good and um, house um, <laughs> officers across the country. I hope that you get the pay that you deserve. Short break. When we come back, we're going straight into the major newspapers for uh, this morning and seeing what big stories we can find there with uh, our guest, G. Dave Johnson, who will be joining us after the short break. Stay with us.